Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. We're on vlog 14. Today I'm going to give you a tour of my 2020 garden. It's uh, fully mulched. I've added some beds, added in my trellising, and everything is really set up for 2020. I hope that you're all doing well. I know this is a really, really difficult time. Um, and just stick with family and friends, take breaks in your garden, and we'll all get through this. So let me give you a tour of everything that I've completed and let's just start right out front here. I put up a two panel fence. I don't know, that's about 12 feet, 16 feet. And I'm gonna be growing something up that. I'm not sure if it's gonna be flower vines, maybe a fruit tree growing along there. But I put that up to block out the archery stuff that's on the other side. This is my cold frame I've been talking about. It did extremely well. The top's been off probably for a couple of weeks now. Everything is growing well. I'm going to build out maybe two or three more of those this year right into this space. Before we walk into the garden, right over here I have raised beds made out of galvanized metal. They're all filled with double shredded hardwood. And I just wanted to say some people have been asking me, well, where do I find it? It used to be at Home Depot, but they've added in a lot of that colored stuff. Um, local landscaping companies. Call them, tell them you want double shredded hardwood. They may not know what you mean. Tell them you want finely shredded hardwood, but that's what I'm growing in. And I think this is gonna be really successful. It's a cheap way to fill your beds. I'll just be adding compost and different manures on top over time. And this, these beds will do wonderfully. Right in front, well, right in the back is the garlic. That's all coming up. These are my onion seed starts that I started in those black little containers. They were overseeded in the back there are leeks. When you first put them in, these have been in here maybe seven, 10 days, they're gonna flop over. You're gonna think that they're not gonna, they're not gonna make it. But once the root systems start growing, they're all gonna perk up like that. And you see, you know, they're starting to stand up. Growing your own onion and leek seed starts is really, really effective and it's, it's cheap. Um, pennies a plant, if even that. All right, let's walk into the garden. Now, last year, I've been t I was talking about cattle panel, and I did go a little bit cattle panel crazy, but I like what I designed. I went with a lot of vertical um, trellising, really, and I'm going to probably be able to grow a third more crops in here just by growing vertically. And we'll talk about them real quick. I know I've gone over them before. So in the first space, and I like to have my garden set up in spaces for teaching. So you guys can decide, you know, what works for you. You can go with the metal rings and the metal frames. These are different beds set up with earth, earth and uh, double shredded hardwood. This one here is my experimental bed. Last year, I grew in double shredded hardwood just in this bed and it did really, really well. So coming up, on the right side, those are peas. If you go to thrift stores, you can find CD racks or different things, dish racks, and you can cover your crops with them and the rabbits won't get to them. And they're really, really inexpensive. That's some broccoli growing in there. We'll start down here on the right side. I have another vertical tower that I'm gonna be growing strawberries in. So let me take a minute here and help people that are new to gardening understand all these bagged products you're going to find it Home Depot, Lowe's, and all those places. And this is what it kind of, look, kind of looks like when you walk into a place for the first time. Tons of bags, it's confusing, and it just looks like you got everything just all over the place. What do you buy? First thing is, is try and buy it on sale. These are, this is probably the most expensive way to fill your garden. And most of the products start with topsoil. Topsoil is just earth. There's no organic matter in there, no peat moss, no coca core, no compost, nothing. That is not really good to grow directly in. It dries out. It can be almost like concrete. It's used for filling holes like in your grass or in places like that. You can use it and I'll explain that in the end. So what happens is they then make the next level. They take a product, uh, they take topsoil, which is the least expensive, then they add in some peat, some peat moss, and it's called premium topsoil. You pay more for that. So your topsoil now has a little bit of peat moss in there. You pay a little bit more for it, and it's a nicer quality material. I still wouldn't use that as a garden. Now, you go from premium topsoil, they add in more peat moss, 
they add in ground up wood and you get a product that's called ground soil like that one most of these have fertilizers in it or here's another one it says garden soil so that was topsoil turned into premium topsoil then you add in more peat moss wood chips you get your garden soil and then they throw in some fertilizer as you go up it becomes more expensive so from garden soil you can find stuff that's called raised bed mix and stuff that's again adding in a little bit a little bit more peat moss usually you can go to your potting mix that's the blue bag that's the most expensive and that's adding in perlite and vermiculite and you kind of get the idea is that they just start with earth they add in non-nutritious peat moss it has no nutritional value for your plants but it holds water creates a nice consistency it's good to grow in but you have to add in your composts so now you get to your manures you can find cow manure you can find humus and manure you can find compost and manure three different products I don't recommend one over the other the problem with those is they can be more expensive like the uh, white bag is maybe four bucks the black cow was a lot more expensive the uh, premium humus and manure was somewhere in the middle the problem is is they can be called compost but they're not fully broken down and when they're not fully broken down they're going to continue to have my microbial activity break down and they're going to take nitrogen from your beds and that means it can steal nitrogen from your plants so what I'm recommending right now unless you know the product really well and you know that it's fully broken down hundred percent composted can't break down anymore just all the good stuff is to just layer that in the bottom of your bed and then put whatever you're gonna put on top of it and because the manures are down low in the bottom they're gonna to continue to break down when the plant roots get there they're gonna enjoy what they give if you mix a the composted manure or the humus manure the black cow right into the top four inches and you put in a whole lot when you put seeds in the seeds may not may not really take off and flourish they may look a little bit yellow they may stay small if you plant right into it with your transplants and your tomatoes they might stay small that's only because it's not fully broken down these products are great to use in the fall let them break down over the winter and then come spring planting time your plants will enjoy them so how do you make this filling the beds how do you yeah what do I want to say how do you fill your beds as cheaply as possible you get a three foot cubic bale of peat moss I don't have it here that is the remnants right there the green and white bag I've already used it filling up that other bed it's three cubic feet before in the video I said two cubic feet it's three cubic feet fourteen dollars take fifty percent peat moss you could use cocoa core if you want 50% peat moss or cocoa core mix it with 50% earth you can use topsoil you can use earth from your area anything that you're pulling out of the ground 50 50 you're going to have your nice quality of your garden soil that you're paying like eight bucks a bag for at a fraction of the cost so it's 50% earth 50% peat moss fill up your bed you can worry about adding in manures and composts over the season over the next year and you'll have a nice cheaply filled bed and you'll save yourself some money so you're going to see a lot of different trellises I'll just let you kind of observe them and use them as you might in your garden and this way the video is not an hour talking about trellising again this is a bed I just added these used to be just flower pots the flower pots right along there were all lined down here and it just wasn't an efficient use of space so I built these uh, two foot three foot by eight and ten beds and again double shredded hardwood and I'll link the videos that show you how I set up the soil if you're interested but that's kohlrabi in there um, let's just see what I got in the back some more broccoli and actually it's two varieties of kohlrabi if you've never grown kohlrabi before it's absolutely delicious you can eat the leaves and you get a nice big root ball above the surface that you can eat I want to garden a little bit less with sprays not because um, I don't like them neem oil baking soda spray all the organic sprays are fine I just want to spray less I want to spend more time enjoying the garden working on other projects so that's ag fabric that I've set up over there let me just show you what's growing in there so the ag fabric or insect fabric has holes in it so the rain and you can uh, put your water-soluble feedings right across the top 
You can just open it, obviously, when you want to go and harvest. So this is the double shredded hardwood. This was filled fresh with fresh double shredded hardwood. I don't recommend that. When you are setting this up, you want at least 90 days to put in the organic fertilizers and let it sit. But I'm, you know, experimenting. Um, in theory, if you set up your raised beds with the double shredded hardwood in the fall, let it overwinter, let it break down, that's gonna be the best way to do it. So right in there, you can see the spinach and the kale has some yellowing leaves around that. That's because wood chips, when they do break down, they take nitrogen from the surrounding area. So I've been combating, combating that with just adding a little more water-soluble organic fertilizer. I'm using fish emulsion and it's taking care of the plants. So in theory, you can grow in a double shredded hardwood, but you're gonna have to use a lot more water-soluble fertilizer if you don't let the hardwood age and it's at least 90 days to make it easier on yourself but it's best if you do it the season before this is my asparagus area all mulched in and hopefully in the next two weeks I have asparagus coming out it established it did well last year um, I'm not really worried but I'm hoping that it didn't get stay too wet here that the crowns the root systems did perfectly fine and they should be all popping up. This is where I had my peppers. I'm growing kale in every other plant you can see in every other pot and that's to space them out. Kale sometimes gets uh, white flies and if you put them all next to each other or if you put them in the same space then the white flies jump everywhere. By kind of spacing out your leafy greens you can do yourself a favor and better manage the pests that might come in. Another quick look at a piece of cattle panel I put down, that will go over the entire bed, or it does go over the entire bed. And in the back, I've already put down six cherry tomato plants. Now that's way too many plants. They are being protected when the temperatures, because we still get frost with that container. I just drop it over them. So my goal is to get cherry tomatoes mid-March. I'm not mid-March, that'd be crazy, mid-May, and maybe some larger tomatoes, so I'm doing a couple of experiments. Eventually, I'm gonna leave that to three plants. They will grow up the trellis on this side, and then on the side here, I'll have cucumbers. I'll be able to pick a tomato and cucumber garden right out of that space. More cattle panel covering the path. Something will go up each side. And in the, before, I had cucumbers all growing, you know, more on the ground with a little bit of trellising. But by taking them up and over the walking space, those are at least eight foot arches, I'm gonna be using space I didn't use otherwise. So this area is gonna be changed up, cleaned up. I'm gonna be putting in three two by six boxes right in there and another piece of cattle panel. Finish off this space. And then I just need to get into the fruit area, put down the heavier mulch, the bigger pieces of mulch, clean out the back and the garden should be ready to go. You can see that I've put the double shredded down on the ground too, on this part of the garden. That will break down, that will give back to my garden, and I'm going to be converting, I hope, comple completely over to compost. We'll go over to the new garden that I planted there. But I have, you know, just organic garden waste, you know, sitting in different places. But soon I'll be setting up and doing some hot, hot composting, and that's all gonna go in along this area just got a bagger for my tractor mower so I'm going to be collecting all the grass I'm not putting any chemicals out there if you are using grass clippings like say from your neighborhood you got to make sure that the people that you're grabbing the bags from because I used to do that and learn the hard way is that there's no chemicals on the lawn clippings because if they do a weed and feed or something like that and you collect their their clippings you put them out in your garden beds you're gonna get stunted growth of your vegetables because they're gonna be recognized as weeds. Peppers are gonna go in the rest of these black pots like I did last year, that worked really well. The Bug Hotel, we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna fix that up a little bit. Flower boxes are all set up. This is the new area. This was just an empty space. Now, I've transitioned over to this is just wood that goes through the chipper machine one time and you can see that's way too thick for growing in but it's great for mulching this is the fruit area in general 
And just so you can eyeball it, here is the double shredded. It's gone through the machine twice, and that's way that's gone through the machine a single time. Not sure exactly what I'll be growing in here, but I wanted to maximize this space. And these are a couple of uh, two foot by six foot beds, or three of them actually, and then a piece of cattle panel right into there. What I like about the panel is it'll spring out. So that's just being supported by the 12 inch board on the right. That one's supported on the left. And once I fill it, that'll be permanent. It'll be nice and secure and I'll be able to grow something over there. I may do flowers, I may do uh, roses, I'm not sure. I wanna show you the fruit garden. These are blackberries. I have to learn how to prune them all and take care of the fruits and the trees. That'll be something I'll be doing this year. That's a red currant that I planted before this whole garden was designed. It's in the wrong place, but I don't have the heart to move it. It's right in the middle of the path. When you're designing your paths too, one thing you want to keep in mind is that you want the wheelbarrow to be able to go wherever you need to go to. So all my spaces, even though some are a bit narrower, that will fit through there and I can move the mulch through. You don't want to be trapped that you can't get to a side of your garden and you have to kind of shovel stuff or carry it over. Just make sure your paths are wide enough to have uh, the wheelbarrow go through. These are all the blueberries. I have, I don't even know how many, 15 plants, 20 plants in there. They're all doing pretty well. Three of them have died, but I thought five of them have died and two of them are coming back. So I'm hopeful that maybe um, they'll send up shoots from the bottom where like that blueberry plant right in there is just has no leaf growth. Maybe something will come up from the bottom. I am growing in 10 gallon smart pots too. I'll be doing videos on that. These are all shredded hardwood in the pots. I have peas coming up in there, two different varieties. Also threw in arugula, some um, red lettuces. I was talking about that in the last video. But I'm really happy with how open the garden is, with all the trellising. Container gardening I'll be talking more about. These are more tomato plants I put in. These are cherry types too. And there, we were just looking at those three garden boxes. You saw the containers. They go over here. I actually put two containers on top of these and give it a double insulation from the cold because we we're still getting the frost. So we're gonna have cherry tomatoes growing up this side of the cattle panel. And then on the other side, I think I'm gonna grow um, some larger tomatoes. So you can walk through here and when you come out the other side, you know, you have a full bounty of tomatoes. And let's just finish up walking down here. And my goal is to get this all done by April 1st. So I'm a couple days ahead, so I'm happy. These are new beds that I've filled up. Combination of layering, more of the lasagna type that I did in another video. And the very bottom is the bigger wood chips, shredded hard, well, the hardwood that you saw in the fruit area. And then I put in dirt, layer manure, and then more dirt. Different way to use cattle panel. I'll be weaving tomatoes all up through there. A couple more different trellis designs. Put up some fencing on the side of that so that when you're sitting over at the porch, you don't see all the stuff like those plants right there from the porch. And on the porch, you can see I have all my transplants out that I grew indoors, getting acclimated to the outdoors. And I think maybe to kind of wrap up, when you're taking on your garden products, yeah, products, your garden projects, always start in a corner. And then as you work your way out, you can see the progress, all the work that you have to do behind you, I've talked about this before, is behind you. So as you clear out spaces and you make changes, you can kind of walk backwards and as you're thinking, oh, I got so much work to do, you can pause and just take a look at everything that you've accomplished. Cool weather crops over here, over planted. These are all set up to help feed families and friends. We're not gonna run out of food with everything that's going on, you know, with the health crisis, but there might be delays and leafy greens and stuff. So I have the space. So I've really packed in different kales, cabbages. I'm growing cabbage, not for full heading, but for the leaves, they're delicious in salads. And I'll be sharing that with people. Uh, let's finish out with just one more tip. This is vinyl coated green fencing. 
I have beets and different things coming up in here, which will be sheared down from the rabbits. It's pretty rigid, so if you just lay a piece down like this, pop it up a couple of inches, the beets can grow through there. Anything you're going to harvest out of the ground, the leaves can grow through there. And then you got more rabbit protection. Rabbits are skittish. They do not like walking on wire or things that don't feel safe to them. You know, I did want to show you the other garden, so we're not done yet. Let me show you the garden I just built. 16 foot by 16 foot space is perfect if you're just getting started. And everything that I just showed you in my garden, of course you don't have to do all that at once. I love it. It's a passion. I don't mind taking care of that. Just take bits and pieces that work for you. So I've set up three beds in here. These are 12 inch 4x4s and a 10 inch 4x6. I've already planted in uh, uh, beets, arugula, spinach, salads, and peas, all the cool weather crops into here. And I did add in some trellising. You don't need to use cattle panel. It's kind of big and it's hard to get to, but it works really well. You can just set up something simple like this. This is just two six foot stakes and I'm just stringing about every four inches across. That will hold different crops, certainly. And it's being set up, maybe I'll just leave you with this, is that the sun comes in from here. So the shadows of that trellis will fall into the path area. I want that area in the back where the cattle panel is to have some protection so from the sun so I'll be able to grow cool weather crops in that 4x4 because it'll be shaded off later in the season when I normally couldn't and probably I'll be growing cucumbers up there. So you can use the cattle panel to drop shade in different places and grow some of the cool weather crops that aren't going to like the direct sun, the warm sun and all that. All right I hope you enjoyed the video. It gives you some ideas of how you can apply this to your garden. Most of all, get out, have fun, forget a little bit, certainly stay safe, and let your garden really be a place where you can find peace of mind, enjoy yourself, but most importantly, share it with family and friends. This is a great time to kind of be more social in the garden, um, where we might not necessarily be visiting people, but we've be, we can be talking to them about what we're growing in the garden, what we're going to share with them, and just really use it as a centerpiece of a discussion. We really need to take breaks during this time. Thanks so much for watching, and thank you for being part of my gardening life.